Hi friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tina Zink and I am in Nova Scotia, Canada and normally my videos are paper crafting and stamping tutorials, but today I'm going to share a little something fun. My other passion besides uh, paper crafting is cooking and baking, I love it. And this is the time of year where I am super, super busy canning all the vegetables from my garden. And today I'm actually working on green tomatoes that were given to me. I did not need tomatoes. I have tons in my garden. Uh, I've already been making salsa and all kinds of things, but I couldn't say no. So I am trying a new recipe today for a green tomato marmalade. So I thought I'd share with you the process and I'm quite excited to try this. So let me show you what I'm up to. So this is what I've got going on. These are half of the tomatoes that were given to me. The rest I've been busy chopping up. So in this pot, I have about 10 cups of uh, chopped green tomatoes. I did not take out the seeds because I just didn't feel it was necessary. They're not super, super juicy like a red tomato would be. These ones are from my garden and I've been chipping away at them and <laughs> oh my gosh, I have so many red tomatoes in the garden so I'm going to make some more salsa. But I have more of the green tomatoes and this is going to be for a different recipe. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to make um, my green tomato mincemeat, which I love, but I still have a bit from last year, or if I'm gonna try a different tomato jam, but I thought I might as well cut them all up while I'm at it, and I will come back to these later, and then I'm going to start cutting up some oranges and lemons. So now that I've got all my tomatoes chopped, this is about 10 cups worth, I have an orange and a couple of organic lemons um, and a cinnamon stick and those are going to go in a little bit later but first I need to add my sugar so to the tomatoes I'm going to be adding about five and a half cups of sugar which is the equivalent of approximately two and a half pounds of sugar and this is tough for me because I've actually gotten away from um, eating sugar or much of sugar in the past year. But you know what? Jam is a treat. And on fresh biscuits, there's nothing like it. And it's not like I'm gonna be using a whole lot at a time. So that's four, five, and a half. Now I'm doing this one-handed, so <laughs> don't judge me on my measuring skills. Now I'm gonna stir all of this in, and then I'm gonna let this sit for three hours. That is going to be pulling out all the juices from the tomatoes, as well as dissolving the sugar. So it is 10 to 12 right now, and that's perfect because I have a whole lot of other things I need to get done today. So I will come back to this at about three o'clock and then I will add my oranges and my lemon, my cinnamon stick and start cooking this. And then I have another ingredient that I'm gonna add and I think that that is going to be a really great addition to this secret ingredient, you guys. I tend to like to tweak my recipes, but um, I've never made this before so I wanna give it a taste before I add any little bits of this and that. So I'm gonna set this aside now for about three hours. All right, I'm back. It is 10 after three. So let me show you what the tomatoes look like. They've been sitting in the sugar for three hours. So look at all that liquid. So that sugar really does pull out all the juice from the tomatoes. I'm feeling a little bit of sugar down at the bottom. So I'm just stirring it up. Now it's all really nice and mixed in and dissolved. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take my handy dandy zester. Love this. I use this all the time. And I'm going to zest my orange and my lemon pills into the tomato pot. Okay, so I am just adding my orange zest and it smells amazing. I love using citrus in my cooking. I love using orange zest and lemon zest, lime. 
I use them in fish. I use them for desserts, um, certain drinks, all kinds of things. So this is one of my most favorite and well-loved tools without a doubt. Get lots of nice zest in there. And of course I did wash my lemon first, or sorry, my orange. And I am now gonna move on to my lemons. And then once I have all the zest off of my fruit, I'm going to squeeze them and get all that juicy goodness into these tomatoes. I think this is going to be a fabulous way to use up green tomatoes if you have a lot in your garden or if you're given some tomatoes like I was when I really didn't need any, but I just can't turn them away, don't want them to be wasted or thrown out, so I knew I could find a way to use them. And as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the video, I do have a fabulous recipe for green tomato mincemeat, and um, that's probably one of my favorite ways to use green tomatoes, to be honest. All right, I'm gonna squeeze in this orange. I have my handy dandy presser. The orange was too big for it, so I'm just gonna use this for my lemons. all of that together. Now I'm going to put in a couple of cinnamon sticks. They're going to simmer in this as well. I have made tomato jam in the past and I absolutely loved it. It was with red tomatoes but I've never done a green tomato marmalade. And if I like it I have a feeling I'm going to make a lot more and give some away as gifts with some homemade buttermilk biscuits or scones maybe in, even some cornbread all right time to put this on the stove so now I'm taking a tin of crushed pineapple now this is 19 ounces and the recipe I'm following, which I will put the link in the description below, calls for 10 ounces. And it says with only some of the juice. Well, you know what? I'm putting it all in. I am putting it all in because I am just wild and crazy that way. And I have to tell you, with that citrus and that pineapple, it is smelling divine. So I am now going to put this on the stove, I'm going to bring it to a boil and then I'm going to let it simmer, uh, stirring occasionally until most of this liquid has dissolved or at least cooked down quite a bit. Um, I am going to put a plate in the freezer in the meantime because I'm going to do the the thickness test because I don't have a thermometer. If you have a thermometer, this will be ready to jar when it's at 220 uh, degrees. So I don't have one. So I'm gonna put the plate in the freezer, put this on the burner, and let it do its magic for the next couple of hours. And then I'll come back and show you what it's looking like before I put it in the jars. All right, I have decided that I want to add some ginger to this. I love ginger and I think it would be amazing in this recipe so I'm going to take about that much looks like a little tree stump but I'm just going to take a spoon and just peel it just using the back of a spoon
Okay. And I'm going to just cut this into tiny little pieces. Now I could use my little chopper gadget, but I'm just gonna use my knife. Right, so my beautiful ginger is all chopped. I'm gonna go put this in the pot where the jam is starting to um, boil and then turn it down to simmer and come back in a couple of hours. Okay, hi guys. It is five after six. I've had the jam simmering. So if you recall, I started it at 12 I put the sugar in and I let it sit for three hours so it could pull out the juice from the tomatoes which it did and uh, all that sugar dissolved and then I've had it simmering on low um, actually for three hours because I've been busy editing another video and doing other things so I just had it really on low so I'm gonna show you what's going on I've just turned it up a little bit I've got my water bath on the go and my jars are going to be sterilizing in a few minutes and I'm also going to make some buttermilk biscuits so that we can have them with our supper tonight. We're having some chicken that I've already got made and corn on the cob and some biscuits and I would like to try this marmalade on those biscuits. So I'll show you how I make my biscuits too but let me show you what the marmalade is looking like. So this is really thickening up really really nice and I'm going to turn it up in a few minutes. I want to time everything just right so my jars are ready. I just got my water canner going. Um, I don't always use my water canner when I'm making jams, but with this being tomatoes, I'm definitely going to process them. I'm going to put my jars in here for 10 minutes when this is boiling. So it's this isn't even close to boiling yet. So I'm going to keep this on low. Um, because it is starting to really simmer a lot more. So it's gonna thicken up really fast. And the last thing you want is for your jams or your marmalade to overcook, they're ruined. So I'd rather go low and slow than uh, overcook and burn and ruin a whole pot of goodness. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I make my buttermilk biscuits. Now, first of all, key ingredient, buttermilk. Except I am out of buttermilk. <laughs> buttermilk is definitely best for this recipe, but many, many times if I've been in a pinch, I can make my own buttermilk, you can too. All you need is your milk and some lemon juice or some vinegar. In this case, I'm using lemon juice. So I have a cup of milk in my measuring cup and I would say add about a tablespoon. And you're going to stir that and then just set that aside for a few moments and that will work just fine. All right, I'm going to add two cups of flour to my bowl. Then I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a little bit more, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, and a half. And then just mix that all up. Most of my bowls are full of tomatoes and fruits and things right now from the garden. So I'm improvising with just a Corningware bowl, but use what you have. 
Now I'm going to use half a cup of butter. Now this has been in the freezer. You could also use shortening. You could use a quarter cup of shortening and a quarter cup of butter. I've done both. They work really, really well. I do prefer using a little bit of butter instead of all shortening. Today we're using all butter. So this is half a cup of butter and as you can see, I'm grating it. So it's a really quick way to incorporate your butter. This works for pastry as well. And you want to work fast because the warmth from your hands, of course, is going to melt the butter. And you could always toss that butter in a little bit of flour that helps prevent it from melting and sticking to your hands. So just grate that up. These biscuits, I grew up on these. My mom used to make these all the time. We'd have them with, with chili and spaghetti and all kinds of different meals. If we had unexpected company, my mom would whip these up and serve them with cheeses and meats and pickles or in the morning she'd serve them with uh, jams and things for breakfast. Such a great biscuit. And uh, it's just one of those things that has many memories for me. So I'm going to try to toss this quickly because again, I don't want the warmth from my hands to get that butter warm. So that's perfectly incorporated. I'm just going to wash my hands and then add that milk. One thing I did forget to mention is I have already preheated my oven to 425 degrees. Let's move this out of the way. Hote. Now I'm going to add my milk. And I have a little extra flour on the side in case I need to add more flour. You don't want it to be super, super wet, but you definitely don't want it to be super, super dry either. You want to make a nice, soft dough. And I also try to make sure I don't overwork it. That will make your biscuits tough and not so great. You want them to be light and fluffy. And this is forming a lovely dough. I would say that's good. All right, so I've just sprinkled some flour. Too much flour, actually, so I'm just going to push the excess away. And I'm going to roll this dough out onto the counter. Get some flour on my hands. And I'm going to lightly knead this about eight times. So I'm just turning it and pushing it in. Turning it, pushing it in. Move that flour. Okay, I didn't count, but I would say that that's good enough and I have a lovely dough. So you could use a rolling pin to make this flat. I am not going to. And I'm just making sure I've got flour on both sides. So basically make it the thickness that you want. So I'm going to say that's about half an inch. And then take a glass or a cookie cutter and cut that into the shapes that you want. I have sometimes just cut these into squares. You could even put this whole thing on the pan and bake it like that, but I like to have my little biscuits. Today I'm just going to use a wine glass. I can hear my, my pot with canner pot with all the water is getting ready so I can get my jam in there so I'm just getting those edges floured put those on my pan 
This is just a stoneware pan from Pampa Chef, which I love. I've got the large one too. And the trick when you're making your biscuits, it's starting to get loud in here, is you want to kind of put them close together. You'll get softer sides that way. So kind of want them to touch a little bit. I'm gonna make some room because I'm gonna put more on here. A little bit more flour. And again, you don't want to overwork it. And for this last bit, I'm just gonna make a cut and just roll them into balls. They don't have to be perfect. They are gonna taste great. So now I have 12 biscuits ready to go in the oven. Okay, while those are in the oven, I need to make room for this jam. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean my counter and I will be right back. All right, biscuits are in the oven. Jam is almost ready. And now I'm taking maraschino cherries and I am going to cut about half a cup worth and add them to my jam and I am going to quarter them. This is almost done. I'm gonna add my cherries and stir that in. And this will add a pretty color as well. I'm gonna put this back on the stove. It smells amazing. Okay, so I've just taken my plate out of the freezer and I've just put some jam on there and some of the marmalade. So I'm gonna let it sit for a minute and see how it sets and in the meantime my biscuits are ready so they need to come out of the oven okay so i already did one jar i forgot to put the camera back on but i've got my hot sterilized jar and i'm just putting my jam in and filling it so i've got Space at the top. Just kind of push that fruit down. And then I have a wet, or damp, I should say, uh, paper towel to make sure that the rim is clean. And a hot seal, a hot ring, and just finger tight. And then I'm just going to set that aside. And continue on. Okay, now I'm going to take these over to the water bath and put them in for 10 minutes. Okay, it is 6.58, it is almost time to take the jars out of the water bath, and then, and then this is done. And I can't wait to try it. Okay, let's get them out of the canner. There's one. 
there they are they look so pretty look at the color in there from the orange cherries it doesn't even look green I mean there's little hues of green but it looks very much like marmalade so I'm gonna put my towel on top something I always do and I'm gonna let those sit overnight so that those seals can set and now we need to ooh, I almost think I just heard one do its ping okay biscuit oh there's another ping and jam time I am so ready to try this jam it has been smelling so good all day there's my beautiful fluffy biscuits just a tiny wee bit of butter and look how perfect this consistency is it's not runny at all it's just Perfect. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to taste this. This is beautiful. I am, and I just can't wait to taste this. Hang on. Okay guys, time for the reveal. I can't wait to taste this. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I can't speak. I'm not doing anything else with my green tomatoes except for making this marmalade. I need more. I need more to give away and I need more to keep. It is unbelievable. I am so happy that I made this. Don't forget I added the fresh ginger, which is scrumptious. And I just found the second half. Oh my word. And you have to make the fresh biscuits to go with this. Mm. This is unbelievable. This is my new favorite jam that I've ever made. And I've made some good jams. Even my black currant jam, which I love. This is an 11 out of 10, you guys. Maybe a 20 out of 10. It is so good. You have to try it. If you do, leave comments. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys have a great time making delicious marmalades and jams from your green tomatoes and